What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about dreams on the PlayStation 4, because this is a game that seems to have people very, very confused as to what the heck it is, and how you play it, and if it's actually worth even trying out. So late last night, I decided to install this game and see how it really works, how you interact with it, and if it's something that hardcore gamers could actually get invested in. So first and foremost, this is actually basically a toolkit. People are able to install the game and create whatever they want within this engine using different techniques. And I can already say that what people are crafting is crazy mind-blowing. I mean, some of the stuff in here is so impressive that I'm definitely sure that some of these people in this are going to go on to become huge, crazy developers because it is so freaking jaw-dropping what they've been able to craft just within this engine. But even if you're somebody who is not very creative like myself, it's still fun because you can actually go in and play the games that they've made. Something that's extra neat about this is the fact that there is actually a community rating system. So whenever somebody makes a game, you can actually go and rate it and say, hey, this freaking rocks, and put it at the top of the list. So everything I've played over the course of the last 24 hours has been remarkable. But I wanted to show you some of the stuff that's considered the best of the best to show you what's really going within this game, and if it's something you could just pick up and try for yourself, even if you don't plan on actually making stuff with the creative tool set. So in my opinion, there are three separate categories of games that you can play within Dreams. There are the copycats, the creatives, and the concepts. Now, I want to go into all three of these separately to really talk about what they are, but let's start off with the copycats, because I do think that this is the stuff that, well, it's probably going to get people the most interested because it's familiar. So basically, people are going into Dreams right now and remaking things pretty faithfully like this. This is Mario, obviously. So you're running around in a full level of Mario with some pretty remarkable physics. You can hit coin blocks, you can get some stuff like points. Now, you can't exactly beat the level and go onward, but it's something that's a unique idea. But this also goes over into things like freaking PT demo. Somebody completely remade the full demo of Silent Hills within this engine, and it is completely dead on. You can hear the storm outside, the footfall sound effects are perfect, and there's even the radio audio from that, they managed to actually install it into this. I mean, to AT, this looks and feels exactly like PT Demo, except within Dreams. It's so cool to actually get a chance to go through this again. And, of course, there's things like somebody made Guitar Hero within this. And it only has a couple songs, and I think the songs were all made by the creator, but being able to try these things is so freaking fun. It's something that's kind of cool to just basically see people, well, as fans creating things in the universe that they know and love the most. This does lead me to the next category of games, though, which are the ones that are perhaps, well, they're the most appealing to look at, but definitely not playable. So this is the category that I call concepts. These are basically experiments to just see what the limits of the Dreams engine can do. Now, some of these are just basically interactive cutscenes, where you're either watching a movie or walking around in something that's, say, an experience. Some of these are literally just like the opening movie of Dark Dark Souls completely remade brick for brick within this, just to basically show you, hey, this is possible. And that stuff's neat. Some stuff is like, look, this guy actually made the freaking portal gun completely in this universe. Now, obviously, it doesn't have the exact same visuals of it, but the fact that I can really just put two separate portals and teleport around this tiny map is basically a giant door that's opening up. Concept stuff is definitely perhaps the thing that's going to be the most appealing to game developers, but the thing is, you're not going to want to just basically play these if you're a hardcore gamer. Thankfully, each of these different types of games are very clearly defined on the menus. I mean, you know exactly what you're getting in for before you click the play button, so you know if this is going to be a movie, if it's going to be just a song or a music video, or if it's going to be a full playable demo like some of this stuff. So the final thing that I consider is the main category and the thing that's, well, to be quite honest, blew me away the most is what I like to call the creatives. These are the people who are making completely original, 
completely unique, never before seen games, completely within dreams. Now, let me just say that again a little bit slower. These are full games that are being made inside of dreams with the toolkit. This is not DLC. This isn't something you pay extra for. All of this stuff you're seeing in here is made with the toolkit. And what's kind of interesting to me is that a lot of this stuff is not only fun and really gorgeous to look at, it's kind of interesting to me that there are basically no load screens. Almost everything instantly appears and the quality of this stuff is quite remarkable. Like this one right here, this is something that just kind of stunned me, which is it is a space first person shooter. So there's all this grass, there's all this physics, there's enemy AI. They actually clearly have behavior patterns where they're trying to jump and attack me. There are multiple weapons to use within this single first person shooter. So I'm able to use my pistol, my shotgun, or my assault rifle. You can even zoom in. I mean, it's just something that is so freaking crazy because this is just one tiny project that somebody's made. This is an entire game within the engine of dreams. Of course, there's things that are basically like a giant skateboarding game if you want to do it. There's stuff like a third person survival shooter where you're actually having to live through waves and waves of stuff. But the things that really caught my attention the longest are the RPGs. Now, this one specifically is crazy. So it's called Slayer and it is... I mean, honestly, this is a full-blown game, and this alone right here is basically worth the cost. It is goofy, it is funny, and it really kind of highlights what I think is the most fascinating aspect of Dreams, which is that it all has this very handmade quality to it. It feels like a developer is actually getting this godlike powers and physically, with their fingertips, crafting a universe around you. So in this, you start off in this bar, and you're talking to this bar owner who's about to give you a quest and before you can do that you actually have to poison one of the people in the bar because it's an assassin and you're not allowed to just sword fight him so i got his beer i put it in this sludge i bring it back and sit on the table and watch how he dies i mean look at this his body motions are so hilarious i mean it is just animated in the most ridiculous way possible and you can tell that this is on purpose the creators in this game know that the fun Funniest parts of this engine is the fact that you are reaching into it and making stuff just wiggle with the natural movements of our hands. It really feels like a puppet show. And then once I left here, I ended up going up into the mountains and fighting a freaking dragon that's burning down an entire forest, all because I'm trying to earn a paycheck. This is so cool. And it's just one piece of what dreams is. I do have a feeling that what this is going to make the most of is basically just playable demos for things that will go on to become full games later. In fact, some of the things I actually tried in this say right at the beginning, okay, this is an experiment and the full game is going to be released on Steam in a year or two. Uh, basically, a lot of this type of stuff is very clearly them as uh, basically developers trying to test stuff out in an already existing engine that they're using for free. I mean, if you're trying to use something like Unreal Engine or Unity, a a lot of those either cost money when you publish the game or they cost you money up front. This is a way for very, very talented individuals to really kind of wet their beak, to try out concepts before their game is actually published or they're actually having to pay up front money. Some of the stuff in here is like a puzzle book that you have to solve in order to see a story or something like this. It is sort of a survival horror game in a ship and it reminds me so much of Alien Isolation. You know, have any weapons, you're super, super desperate, and while this is just a little short teaser, it's so interesting to see out this window when there's the wide ranges of space and all these different panels and this talking robot. A lot of these are just basically ideas that have been instilled into video game format. Even walking around on a foreign planet really gives you an opportunity to see what this stuff is going to be in the long run, because right now this is just early access. This is the first day, the first real time that people are getting a chance to really utilize this toolkit. I'm just so hyped to see what these games and experiments are like in six months or a year or two years because, I mean, they're just going to keep growing. I mean, I can actually sort of imagine the fact that maybe at some point mainstream developers will come into Dreams just to try stuff out for fun. Imagine if Corey Balrog, the creator of God of War or the, the developer of the God of War on PS4, imagine if he may 
made a level that just basically let us experiment with the axe physics in God of War within this universe. That'd be great. I mean, so much of this stuff, even if it looks simple, is so freaking fun. Like, this is actually the top rated thing in the world right now, is this game where you're just driving a car around because it is so addictive. Dreams is something that was definitely worth the $30 price tag, and I say that as somebody who has no intention of ever using the developer tools. I just want to experiment with what other people who are super obviously geniuses are making. I really just gotta say I love that things like this exist. It feels like a true celebration of game developer and gamer passion all in one very cool package. Okay guys, sorry about this random video, it's just so freaking hyped. I'm so interested in little things like this. They're so cool to me because they really do feel kind of like the future of all gaming. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. There is so much gameplay I could not fit in this video just because all these demos are so freaking great. Uh, thank you everybody to actually make these games. You developers impress the hell out of me and I seriously gotta tip my hat to you. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.